everybody. Welcome to another episode of Orange Grove 55. This is part two. Part two of the Walt Disney Company third quarterly earnings. There was a lot of information, so we had to split this up a little bit. But uh, before we get started, let, you know, let's let's uh, introduce my panel. Uh, we're going to start off with Mr. Uh, 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 <laughs> we're starting <laughs> with Mr. Uh, Vash Sky, uh, host of Freshly Squeezed. Mr. Vash, how you doing, buddy? Doing very well, very well. Uh, man, I'm so excited to get into this because uh, you know part <sighs> part one obviously had all the all all kinds of great info but there's there's some juicy info here that i don't think people were expecting so i'm i'm so excited to get into it awesome awesome rudio welcome back buddy i like your sweater man this is dope. thank you this has got the best the castle radiator spring oh yeah the matterhorn and then there's like another there's a little there's a little, oh, pipe pew, pew, a little galaxy's <laughs> edge on there i like yeah. it Nice. There's a nice little pickup that I got at uh, GCA <laughs> when we had that nice legacy pass holder, thirty percent off. Mm -hmm. Nice, nice, uh, nice. Well, welcome way, aboard, guys. Welcome aboard. We're gonna we're gonna get this this uh, train rolling here, and uh, let's talk about some 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 Disney genie, some Disney genie. Um, so this mm -hmm. is a new, from what I understand, a new app based program that Disney's yeah. gonna be rolling out. I think Chapek, our good boy, our our, our boy Chapes, as he, as our friend on Twitter uh, Hedge likes to call him Chapes. Uh, Chapes, said, yeah, Chapes. Uh, this is going to be um, what was it? My Magic Plus on steroids? Is that what My you Magic mean? Plus on steroids? So I got two audio clips for you. One where he kind of provides kind of a you know a little bit of overview of what he's kind of entailing, and then a question specifically was asked about it, which he gets into. So we'll play the first one for you now. Do it. Additionally. We've made significant investments in sophisticated technology and tools, creating a revolutionary new multi-tiered service we're calling Disney Genie that will enable our guests to more easily and efficiently navigate everything our parks have to offer. We're very, very excited about this new service and we'll be providing additional details soon. The goal of Disney Genie, which will appear in a user-friendly app, is to create a better, more personalized and customized experience for guests, putting them in control and providing even greater flexibility and choice. They'll be able to spend less time waiting in line and figuring out what attractions or dining options are available and more time having fun. At Parks oh, and Experience, oh, my magic plot. So, uh, yeah, he goes into that. That was part of his opening statements. And then somebody asked him specifically, hey, uh, you're saying that this is going to be, you know, this is going to amount to large revenue earnings or whatever. Uh, go ahead and explain that. And he goes into it. Was us basically sticking our toe yep. in the pond. My magic plus was us basically sticking our toe in the pond of this type of transformational work. Disney Genie, though, is that program on steroids. This is going to revolutionize our guest experience. Guests are going to spend less time waiting and more time uh, having fun in our parks with a dramatically improved guest experience that's going to make their navigation of their day and their planning of their day much easier. Essentially what it's going to do is take the consumer preferences that uh, we know from our consumers given what we know from them and blend that with uh, uh, basically industrial engineering data that we've got in terms of how our park is operating that day and meld those together to make suggestions on the fly that not only will lead to that improved guest experience, but at the same time lead to substantial commercial opportunities for us as a guest navigates their days. So uh, it certainly uh, qualifies in my mind for both materiality and transformational impact on our business from a yield standpoint. Interesting. Yes. Interesting. So, so from what I understand, from what he's saying, and he is, he's pretty vague in his description of this, Very. but from what I say, it's going to kind of be almost like, and I could be wrong, but I, I kind of get the impression it's going to be kind of like a hub for like a uh, mobile ordering, maybe mm -hmm. virtual queues uh, for attractions and what have you. Maybe they'll utilize the app to recommend certain things like, Hey, yeah. this particular um dining establishment is closed but maybe you can try this one instead that's kind of the gist of it am i am i off base here dre is that kind of what he's kind of saying here 
No, no, I, that that is actually exactly what he's indicating. The, the whole idea, the whole premise, it kind of goes back to Walt Disney World Ops as a whole. They would do some kind of social, social engineering things to kind of uh, uh, mm, dynamically affect crowd patterns. So, for example, one of the things that they've been, they've been doing for a while is, let's say you get a fast pass for a certain attraction, and uh, that attraction happens to be near a par- near the parade route. Well, while a parade's going on, obviously that's going to conflict a little bit. So what they'll do is they'll push that return time just a little farther back so it doesn't inter in, so it doesn't interrupt that uh, that 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 parade that's actively going on next to that attraction. It, similarly, they they play the whole thing in reverse. So if you have an attraction that's like a long way away from a parade route, maybe have you go there during a parade so that that way you're out of the way kind of thing. So they would do these kind of little things to kind of engineer the whole thing. Uh, Disney Genie is the back and forth on that. It is a whole kind of dynamic world. So the idea is they give you an itinerary, and if you follow it while everybody else is getting kind of similar itineraries, they can better... Uh, they they can better dynamically adjust when you hit certain attractions at what points uh, manage the demand and spread it out evenly so you know right now you have attractions like past like six or seven that just they're walk-ons right whereas Mm. in the kind of peak times of the day they're like really really long what if you could adjust that on the fly and kind of spread that out to those later hours to 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 make it that more efficient it's that kind of level of 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 uh, of detail right there yeah Yeah. tinkering yeah uh correct uh rudio do you have uh expanded thoughts on that no i was gonna actually say this would have went perfect so like i ran into an instance the last trip i went on where i had dining reservations at two o'clock yeah. and the uh call time for my boarding group for rise of the resistance was at that same time right so disney genie would probably say hey you know what you have dining reservations at two o'clock we're gonna go ahead and bump your rise of the resistance boarding group to the next time slot that way it's not interfering with the time i'm right. assuming that's the system that it would kind of work on Yes, exactly. It would be keyed into all your day. It would be keyed in because they already do this already. They, uh, when you go for a boarding pass or you go for a reservation, that, that information is already there. It's just not dynamic. It's just kind of like mm-hmm. inflexible. This would provide that flexibility to shift some things around. I mean, I remember when uh, the boarding gra- boarding group system was introduced, calling Disney. I think it was. Uh, I think it was their uh, guest service line or whatever. And I I called them. I said, Hey, look. What happens if these two conflict? Oh, you're gonna have to choose. Have to choose. If I don't show up for that, for that restaurant, I, I'm I'm out ten dollars yeah. a person here. That could well, be, you know. And what happened? The 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 band aid to the solution right now sure. is that if you were to go to residence resistance <laughs> at a later time. So as soon as we were done with our dining, mm-hmm. we w- went to uh, residence resistance, and you show them your receipt, letting oh. them know, hey, I was at the restaurant during my boarding group, and uh, your barcode will still show via the app, but you'll mm-hmm. they'll just scan your barcode. You'll show the proof that you were at a dining res- uh, restaurant, and you'll be able to get back on the ride. Oh, okay, that's that's actually really good advice there, yeah. Rudy. Uh, go ahead, Orange Gove. I think you were going to say something. Well, I, I was going to ask you guys. I'll start. I'll start with you, Rudy. What mm-hmm. are your feelings on how the fan reaction is going to be to this new program? Because Disney Disney Park fans, they're very <laughs> very particular. They're very very particular. Very particular. Um, is this going to go over like a lead balloon, or are we going to be with welcome or open arms? Obviously, just like with anything Disney rolls out, there's going to be a, a mixed reaction. Um, mm-hmm. The one thing that I think that will exceed it over to the negative side would probably be if they created this platform for the paid fast pass system. Okay. So if Disney were to say, hey, this is going to be the only way you're going to actually be able to attain these uh, paid fast passes or these paid from the line passes via the Genie app. I think that's going to rub people the wrong way. Yeah. But I think if it's beneficial to them as far as the dynamic of the vacation going experience, I think you'll see the positivity in that. 
You feel the same way, Vash, pretty much? Or I think so. Different? Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I mean, look, if you gate things behind certain price points, I mean, that's obviously mm-hmm. going to rub people the wrong way, obviously. I mean, it's like now we're nickel and diming all this kind of stuff. Nickel and diming attractions now. Uh, you know, obviously people are going to feel differently about that. But I think really the goal is to make, I mean, obviously there's monetization in there. But the goal is to really make, you know, make the uh, experience for the Disney parks far more efficient by having as many people enrolling in this program as possible. How that translates to Disneyland, I, I don't, I don't think it does quite in the same way. Not yet. <laughs> but yeah. hey, I, I've said that before. <laughs> but <laughs> no, um, I agree. I but agree. you know, Just... this is it's a very dynamic system. You know, it's it's like. If you don't opt for one of the things on the itinerary, if you're like, oh, we want to go do something else, it'll flow with that, which is mm-hmm. really kind of cool. They've cool. been spending a lot of R&D and a lot of operational time managing that. And, and what effect does that have on the system and so forth? How do we account for these changes and fluctuations and stuff? So I think it's really, really fascinating. But as Bob Trapeck notes, there is going to be a consumer uh, you know, revenue generating component attached to this. And, and how that's all going to be integrated, going to be fascinating to see. Well, that and that was actually my next question. Because mm-hmm. um, I don't think it was mentioned yesterday. I mean, it was mm-hmm. so vague. He, it was so vague, the way, the announcement. But I wonder if this is going to be a, like a paid like subscription service genie or if this is going to be a free app like the, you know, like the Disneyland Resort app is free. You know, I'm wondering, you know, if this is going to be like a, like an extra charge to utilize this genie. I think for hotel resort guests, I think this will be part of the experience. Okay. Part of same way that Magic Bands and My Magic Plus were part of your Disney vacation experience. I think it's going to go in that same um, same group. Uh, for annual pass holders, though, I think there might be maybe some sort of an additional charge, maybe an add-on later down the line or maybe disney world adds it to or clicks onto the magic key program maybe that's a program that you can add on to your magic key mm. it's all up in the air i think interesting interesting now what is what what do you guys think of and i'll start with you vash what do you yep. guys think of with all this new stuff rolling out and disney yep. seems to chapek really seems to be taken up pulled by the horns mm-hmm. and he's really revolutionizing a lot in the parks for good or worse you know for mm. better or worse he's really making some changes yeah um, do you, th- what do you think this means for magic bands, Vash? I mean, I mean, do you think that this is going to be the end of magic bands? Are we, are we past um, that? Well, I, the, the, I, I'll say this. I think that the monetization component of Genie, uh, might be kind of an opt-in kind of thing. Cause the idea is to get as many people on Genie as possible. That's how the system works as efficiently. So I don't think there will be a buy-in price to get on board, but maybe some, some other gated opportunities along the way. As far as magic band goes, Look, Magic Band was always a holdover for the mobile phone, right? Because right. at the time it was introduced, I think there were some statistics that came out that said, like, I think like fifty or sixty percent of people have a have a smartphone, and and it's it, it you know it ranged from the demographics, so you know, eighteen to thirty five had more cell phones than the older crowd, and so forth. So they were waiting for they, this was always kind of a placeholder for the adoption of cell phones and that's why a lot of the infrastructures that they put in would make use of the cellular uh or mobile technology that would come out with with more adoption of those cell phones the asian market already had it wrapped up but the american market had to catch up and and one of the things that they did you know along with that was the magic band system so now with the proliferation of mobile phones being what they are i think we're going to be seeing a lot less emphasis placed on magic bands but it is kind of a source of revenue so they kind of want to keep it around for the for the whole yep you see there and you, you go. got to throw in the, the smartwatch era the smartwatch <laughs> oh, sure. the fact that people are able to uh yeah automatically attach their apple wallet or their google wallet to their apple watch or their google watch all of that uh turns over as well Correct. Yeah, Correct. And, and, and it makes sense from a, from a financial standpoint for Disney to kind of get rid of Magic Bands because why produce a product that you can essentially do the same or even more effectively on someone's existing phone yeah. or their watch? You know, yeah. why not utilize the Apple products that are already created? Disney doesn't have to worry about, you know, spending money on creating those. Yeah. Just utilize what's already there and that everyone already has. You know, it kind of makes more sense. So yeah, I think Magic Man is probably, uh, I mean, maybe not 
immediately, but probably going to be phased out eventually. Everything's going to be through the mobile. Everything's going to be through, you know, that whole process. Probably, probably. I, I think we, I think we'll, we'll end up seeing, um, you know, a less of an emphasis placed on magic ban and maybe more emphasis placed on technologies going forward. Um, I, I know they, they kind of like that, uh, you know, they, they like how people will get magic bands on kind of a regular flowing basis. So I think we'll see that extended out like they do with everything, but eventually they're actually a little bit ahead, of, not ahead of the game, but uh, as of, I want to say two or three weeks ago, you can actually go into some of these stores and buy Apple band um, that are similar to the magic band. So oh. it's part of their DTEC series, like the phone cases and any sort of accessories that they sell. Right. They right. sell now Marvel um, Apple Band watch, Apple Bands. Apple, yeah. Yeah. So, so I, I envision a transition towards that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so. yeah. And that was one thing that I was, I was always kind of jealous of Florida, man. They, they, like, I'm always about like anything you can customize like that like mm -hmm. i got i'm gonna actually i'm gonna show you guys something real quick and this is this is funny i'm gonna check, show you this oh go ahead no you know that's interesting that you say that og because uh chapek you know one of the, his grand master plans was to do the same thing that they did with walt disney world but over at disneyland because disneyland's digital infrastructure was really behind the eight ball as comparison to walt disney world so it was like hey after galaxy's edge how about we invest like majorly to get the technical right. infrastructure within mm -hmm. disneyland uh shored up a little bit of that has happened but they can go a lot further yeah 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 absolutely i've always wanted i've always wanted to be able to buy a magic band i think it's pretty cool you can just get like you know haunted mansion or you can mm -hmm. get marvel yeah. I recently, I recently bought these Crocs, and I, <laughs> I've been oh, having a man. fun time with the, with the little things, you know, and all that. <laughs> like for me, like that's right up my alley. A Magic yeah. Band, I would be all in with getting a Magic Band. Um, I can get the little little add-ons or whatever. Mm. I'm like the worst Disney show when it comes to that. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, so if they brought that to Anaheim, I'd be all in. But yeah, pro probably not coming to Anaheim anytime soon. Probably mm. not. There was plans of it like in 2014. Yeah. And I remember all my friends being like, are you going to get a magic band? What color are you going to get? <laughs> and it's the year 2021. And I still have a dumb color. <laughs> wow. So. Didn't happen. Didn't quite Never happen the way that. But uh, speaking of the parks, though, I kind of wanted to uh, 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 speak on another thing that Bob Chapek sure. was bringing out, specifically yields and maybe even cleanliness and sanitization and maybe what they think of the parks going forward in this yeah. era. So here we go. Club 12. Okay. In terms of impact of the, the Delta variant, we see strong demand for our parks continuing. And the uh, primary noise that we're seeing right now are really around group or convention cancellations. In other words, uh, large groups that are coming in relatively short term. But on the whole, we see really strong demand for our parks. In fact, our park reservations now are above our Q3 attendance levels. And as you just saw with our earnings announcement, our Q3 attendance levels were pretty darn good. So we're still bullish about our park business going forward. I may also suggest as a bridge to the second question that we've implemented a reservation system that's going to enable us to spread our demand, increase our yield, and improve our guest experience at the same time. And in terms of the long lasting impacts that you mentioned, uh, I, I think some of the cost implications that we need to do for hygienic purposes are going to be relatively short lived. And frankly, in the grand scheme of operating our parks, not all that material. But what will be the long lasting impact is the improvements that we're making with guest personalization and guest choice, therefore affecting the tremendous yield benefits that we've been able to uh, uh, extract over the last few quarters. And that's only going to grow in the future with our ability to really do world class yield management systems through our new reservation system. So, mm. so. Okay, that's interesting. Now he said yield like ten times. That's oh funny. yes, <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. So, mm -hmm. yeah. That, that keys into our previous conversation about hmm, how many cast members are they thinking about hiring? You know, at the end of the year, because uh, according to Christine McCarthy, she's like, "Hey, we're going to be back up to you know uh, full cast uh, by the end of the year." That's like, what does full cast look like? Uh, how, you know, and when it comes to yields and stuff, you know, this is why I brought it up in previous discussions because yeah. you know, Bob Chapek, he all about them yields. And it's like, what yeah. does that mean? And we've seen some things that are like, 
huh, that trash can's not getting changed out as regularly as maybe it should. And, oh, this restroom right here isn't getting checked over uh, like it's supposed to. And, hey, my room hasn't been uh, changed out when it's supposed to. You know, all these kind of things, that goes into the yield talk. And so when I hear yield, uh, I don't know about all that. I, it, 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 it has me a little bit uncomfortable for the future of the parks. Now, Dre, you're really good and you're really concise and clear with this stuff. And I, I want you to kind of explain to the audience what is the yield exactly so they understand kind of what's going on here. Yield is essentially getting the most out of the resources that you have currently available, right? Maximizing uh, consumer revenue, a guest experience with how many cast members that you're given or, or, or you know, uh, making use of, uh, you know, as many ride vehicles as it takes to, to get the uh, operational demand as low as possible, uh, but but also controlling overhead. You know, it's all of those kind of things. So we've been hearing reports of overworked cast members where it's like, hey, this this station or whatever, you should take six cast members. Now it's down to two or whatever, and they're demanding more out of them. That's part of that yield conversation. Mm -hmm. It's because if you keep overhead down, that's less revenue that you have to make in order to in, in order to get profit. So if you can keep the overhead down, if you can keep those operational costs down while also, you know, getting consumer spending and stuff up, well, then you, now you're making more money. Yeah. And we've seen that calculation. I mean, look, how many restaurants? It's like, wait a minute, there used to be, you know, six, seven items. Now there's two or three. You know, that's part yeah. of that yield calculation. It's, you know, if we can get away with you know, less menu items and that's less product that we have to order or m less diverse uh, diversity in the product that we o order, that kind of thing. Yeah. And that was one thing that we, on your, on your show, Freshly Squeezed, um, mm -hmm. shameless plug, by the way, <laughs> <laughs> but, but, <laughs> I, on your show, when I, when I came back from Disneyland for the first sure. time to reopen, that was one thing that I, that I talked to you about was that the menu items, that was the one thing that I noticed that was different than, than, than the norm yeah. was yeah. like, like me and my girlfriend were like, we're on the app and we're trying to figure out what we want to eat. And there's like two items on every menu. And it's like, you know, it, it was, I, and I couldn't tell you what items were missing, but yeah. I just knew that there yeah. were more on these menus than before. It, it, it felt very, very much truncated than before, you know? And, uh, Even like the noodles, for example, right? The new, the Ohana noodles. One of the reasons why that was taken off is because it takes an entirely different, an addition, one additional cast member to do noodles and prepare them and do them. And, and because they can't sit, they kind of have to be done fresh. So you have to constantly do them. Well, that requires one more cast member. And to them at the time, it was worth taking that one cast member out yeah. and reducing the overall guest experience because the yields were that much greater. That's that calculation. So when you hear yields, it kind of makes me nervous because I internally, I know what that means. I know it's like, Wow, it's you know you're 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 looking to you're you're looking to you know do do more with less. You're you're looking to 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 have the same kind of level of guest experience, or or at least diminish it to the point where it doesn't show up in the survey results. And uh, and you know and also and also leveraging that and getting more yields out of it. That's kind of what I what I what I what I that's what I feel when I hear that. Yeah, I think that'll catch up to them though. I really do. I, what, I, what do, I do too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, Rudy, short what do you term think? gain, long term loss. Go ahead, Rudy. Exactly. Well, what's, funny, what's funny is uh, I turn on the news, the local news, KTLA, as I always do every morning, and mm -hmm. uh, they were actually outside of uh, DCA, right there on Harbor. And the big headline was, if I'm not mistaken, if I have a photo of it, oh. was we'll take the photo. <laughs> Disneyland increasing attendance. Oh, and interesting. So, huh. what they took from that from the shareholder meeting yesterday was Disneyland fully staffed, increasing attendance. <laughs> and they're interviewing people outside of the park saying, Well, what do you think about the crowds uh, going into Disneyland heading into the uh, next few months with them increasing? They're like, Oh, it's fine. We're, we're fine with the crowds being at Disneyland. We're used to it. But the problem is, is that it's, it's the staffing issue that Vash was alluding to. Basically, yeah. getting all of those cast members to come back trained, ready to go by the holiday season, that's going to be the biggest obstacle. Oh, um, huge. I, I, I have, I'm optimistic 
towards the situation. I really hope they can uh, hire as many cast members or many people in that area, Orange County, Long Beach, um, just in that little vicinity over there in Southern California. Hope they can bring those cast members back and get them ready because granted, like Bash was saying, there's been a few changes that we've seen custodial wise. I haven't seen it personally, but you can probably see it if you're paying more close attention to it. And as far as OG was saying, there's few things that are just missing and it, right. you feel it, it feels bare, but you know that Disney's capable and it has the potential to be at its best when everybody's there doing what they're supposed to be doing. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think Disneyland, like you touched upon Rudy, I mean, we haven't really seen it. That much. I think Florida is for some reason is getting hit much harder with this. Yeah. Um, I see yeah. reports all the time out of Florida. Like, you know, overflowing trash cans. Things mm-hmm. are falling apart. Uh, look, Disneyland has problems, but I, 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 you know, it doesn't seem to be as much of, a, of an issue as it is. They're not Florida. visible. They're not as visible. As, right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But, you know, who knows? It might it might come home to roost here, too, in a very visible oh, way. Yeah. You never We've know. seen logs and stuff sink <laughs> in Jungle Cruise. Uh, you know, oh yeah, God. Jungle Cruise boats sink and logs sink and Splash Mountain. So it's like... Yeah, it's not really visible to the guests, but man, I just, I really, I, I worry about the cuts being made. Like, for example, like restrooms having to close an hour early, mm-hmm. uh, you know, when, when Disneyland's closing up at night because they literally don't want to, you know, staff third shift who would usually perform those duties. So they're throwing it on the day and night shifts to, to or evening shifts, I should say, to, to do that. And it's like, I mean, come on, that's impacting and affecting the guest experience in a way that they, that's never happened before. And my, my really big concern is, is if you're cutting there, if you're cutting in all these places, where else are you potentially cutting? Because, I, you know, look, just talk to, um, you know, Cynthia Harris and Paul Presser, how that turned out. Yeah, that's a big problem. That's a big yeah. problem. I remember that those days very, very vividly. And that's why I've never really freaked out too much about Chapek because sure. those days were so much worse. But it doesn't take too yeah. much to get back to those days. So we'll see. We'll see if his yields, you know, and all that <laughs> stuff starts to cause injury. Hopefully not. Knock on wood. Please don't. But if it starts to cause injury on attractions or, or God forbid, like a death or something. Yeah, we got some problems, you know. So we're not there yet. No. But we're still getting st- – we're, we're kind of just getting started. Now, I do want to pivot a little bit. Mm-hmm. From what I understand, Dre, you have a little bit of information – a little information from a source about mm. APEC and his standing with the company. I want to kind of dive into that from what you've heard from your source. Yes. So, uh, I mean, well, in one instance, we know exactly where they're cutting costs. <laughs> right. It might be with some talent. It might be with Skylar Johansson and how this thing is not yet resolved yet. JPEG took a big stance and he got the numbers that he won for sure to, to, yeah. to, to improve his stock with shareholders and investors. But this issue isn't resolved. I've heard some some other interesting things that uh, that provide some more meat on these bones here. For example, uh, one of the reasons why Emma Stone and Emily Blunt might not be, you know, going, you know, talking out in the press and so forth and, and making their stances known is because from what I understand... Scar Joe's legal team has personally uh, gone to them and are looking to maybe include them in the lawsuit. Interesting. And you can amend those filings um, after they're already submitted to the court. Uh, and if they, 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 the idea is to make them joint plaintiffs against Disney because, from what I understand, the deals were very, very similar to what. Uh, Scott Johansson is actually going through right now. And if that happens, I mean, look, you've got three, count them, three leading ladies here where they all had not only not only did this affect may may affect their work as it stands right now, maybe put a, a, a cloud on their on their on their work in Corella, Jungle Cruise, maybe Mary Poppins and, uh, and all that. But they were also actively working on future films with the company. So uh Emma Stone, uh, Cruella 2 was kind of uh, rolling through and, and looking really? to, to hit development at some point. Um, uh, Scarlett Johansson with Tower of Terror. And uh, em- Emily Blunt was obviously going to be contributing to the Jungle Cruise franchise that they envision that, that they have on their hands there. 
And so now it becomes, wow, you know, not only did you, not only you may have, you, you may have treated Scarlett Johansson properly, but you may have <clears throat> endangered these works going forward and, and multiple films in development. And so to the board, that looks a lot different, especially right. when, and I've gotten this from, from a good source here, it was Chapek himself who was so adamant about Black Widow specifically being released on Disney Plus and Premium Access. Like, that was his deal. And by the way, that goes against what Kevin Flaggy won. Apparently, Disney is pretty upset that this got leaked out. But Kevin Flaggy, for months leading up to it, I think maybe John Campia even uh, maybe talked about this a little bit, for months leading up to Black Widow's release, he was like, no. Like, this really should have a theatrical release, just like we have done with previous Marvel films. And that, you know, depending on how this does, might impact the Marvel Cinematic Universe going forward in, in, in a number of profound ways. Keep this uh, with, it, with, a, with a theatrical release, a traditional theatrical release. And it was Bob J. Book himself who said, no, we're putting this on Disney+, Plus. we're putting this on Premier Access. And so, you know, it's all these kind of things. And I think that's why the filing was pretty quick to state out um, with uh, Scarjo's legal team. Like, hey, we're not putting this on Marvel. This is really Disney's issue, right. right? And and that's why I think there's maybe some interplay there with Kevin Feige and some relationships and so forth. But Bob Chapek is in a really kind of tough spot because now, like, he that this is what he wanted, and now he could have tripped up the studio in really profound ways that is going to get the board's attention. Meanwhile, he's got to make he's got to make up for Kevin Feige. So what is he doing? Well, Shang-Chi is his attempt to make up for it. Remember, Rudio, we talked about, like, hey, wait a minute, Shang-Chi getting premium access. Well, that's in their full control. Why are they doing this? This mm. this experiment or whatever? What? I mean, yeah, right. the experiment is <laughs> to give Kevin Feige what he wanted, right. which was a theatrical release for role. his films. And so, from what I understand, he has, he has personally, uh, uh, approved a lot of promotional dollars for shang chi now promotional dollars are interesting because for every single dollar you spend you have to make up to get a profit right yeah yields <laughs> and <laughs> and so it's like oh crap like i like i have to be in good with kevin feige because obviously the board right. they, they can't him, they though. can't ignore that right you got him. but i'm spending money on a film that might not do well in a time where it's I mean, you know, Delta's coming up here. So he's he is really in a bind getting it from all sides. And from what I understand, he's a little nervous, which is why he used terms like, hey, it was Bob and I. Bob and I were yeah. making the decision to put on. Mm -mm -mm, not from what I hear. Go ahead. But, but here's the thing with the Chang saying she. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is OK. Like you were saying, like, you know, th exclusive theatrical window giving feige what he wants but the sure. problem with this though it can go either way though it can go yeah. either way cool yeah. if, Sh if shang chi if shang chi comes out and it's a blockbuster it destroys the box office it mm -hmm. it validates everything that, the, that team scarjo was saying it mm -hmm. validates kevin feige they mm -hmm. won chapek comes out looking with egg on his face right mm -hmm. the theatrical window should have been what they did with black widow mm -hmm. but the risk though the risk though if Shang Chi comes out, it's an unknown character. It's not mm -hmm. Black Widow that we've been uh, loving for a decade or so. With it's not an A list character. cast. Let's, let's point that out. Not an A list cast. Yeah, exactly. There's not an A list class cast. It's it's completely new. You're you don't have that premiere access back. You know thing to fall on. Yeah. If this comes out and mm -hmm. it does Suicide Squad numbers, mm, yeah, well, that's the that big worry. That changes the game for Chapek in a good way, though, because then he can say, "Hey, look, you know what? I did it your way, and it flopped." And and this is why I I, I put Black Widow hybrid model because this is what we're dealing with here. So it's a risky proposition. Mm. It really is. It's a risky proposition. Rudio, what do mm. you think? I mean, it could, what do you, I mean, how do you, how does this go? Like how you were saying, Shang-Chi, this being the one that they're experimenting with. Right. I, it's very interesting that he picked this film. 
and that this film was coming out before the Eternals. Because with the Eternals, you can go back and say, oh, well, I have Kit Harrington, I have Selma Hayek, I have yeah. these pretty good known actors in this film. And it's an ensemble, I want to say, of actors in that film. Mm. Drive that uh, promotion down everybody's social media, trailers, whatnot. Shang-Chi, it's, it's just, it's so weird because not only is it an unknown character, mm. it's just, it's, people are just still not ready to go back to the theaters. Mm. There's still that, that good portion of America that just is not ready. So yeah. in, in major you, markets too. Yeah. yeah. Right. Right. So do you think this is actually kind of like a little 40 chess on Chapex part? Like he kind of knows that, yeah. like he kind of yeah. knows it's going to not really perform and he's kind of trying to make a point here with Shang-Chi yeah. or is that not happening? I think he's trying to make the point with Shang-Chi, but it's, Maybe. it's a layup for him in a way because he, he kind of knows he kind of, he can forecast this in a way. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. risky. And yeah. the thing that really kind of makes me mad, though, is because I'm really excited for Shang-Chi. I'm really oh, excited. So for and, yeah. and the thing that makes me mad is because if this movie doesn't do well, it messes up the chances of this character being in future MCU stuff, I think. And I really want to see this character. It looks dope. I mean, oh, this yeah. movie looks dope. Right. And I'm afraid that Chapek and all his data points, they're going to mm -hmm. decide, well, you know what? The the movie didn't do that well. So, you know, we can't put him in the new this movie and that movie. And yeah, that worries me because I think the character and the concept is really, really cool. And it's it's just being released in, in, a, in a way that it's, it's oh, man, I don't know. I, I'm worried about it. What are your thoughts? Vash? It's what tough. Look, that? look, it, it, this is um, this is a really tough kind of thing here because, yeah, I, Maybe it makes Shapek look better, but does it make Kevin Feige look any? You know, does, does it make him look good? It hurts. I mean, yeah. what if he says, "Hey, look, you could have pushed it back. You know, right, you right. could have pushed it out of this whole whole kind of thing and kept a theatrical window." So, like, there, there, there's a little bit of maneuvering here, and it, and yeah. it sucks how these films have just become like, like, just. Like they're weaponizing them. Yeah, they're right? weaponizing. You know, they've just become these kind of pawns in this big old chess game, and it's like. Damn, like you, you've got so many people working on these things. You have so many people's jobs and at stake and, 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 and you know, people put their heart, blood and soul into this. And it's just like, it's just pawns on this big check chessboard. It really yeah. sucks that it's gotten to this point. But I mean, man, here we are. Here we are. I got to ask creatively. Do you think if they were to go back, say they knew all this was going to happen two mm. or three years ago, yeah. do you think they would have said, you know what, we're going to make Shang-Chi a Disney plus show. Do you think they would have? rather done that instead of making a theatrical release i think if you knew the circumstances of what was going to happen yeah uh, yeah, I, yeah i could i could definitely see that because there's a reason why you put <coughs> stuff in there, there's a reason why you create content for the theaters and there's a reason why you create content for disney plus right. and the, the 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 math you see that's why you know some of these things are a little bit concerning to me because it's like if you're going to have like a really big temple, right? I mean, you, mm. the, does the math necessarily make sense to even put it out on Disney Plus? Um, you know, it's interesting. Uh, I'd play the clip, but we do not have time. Uh, <laughs> Kristen McCarthy actually goes into like, hey, home media sales are down because they're not buying. Well, it's like, yeah, of course they're down because, you, right. you know, people bought it on Disney Plus and that's what they're keeping. You know, they, yeah. they're not go out. Right. So it's like you're, you're borrowing against the film when you do this and the, and the length of the film and, and the because they would sell the film resell the film like multiple times you get the yeah. you get the tickets at the at the door right you get maybe the streaming they, or the blu-ray release resold, you get the cable streaming package go ahead they resold snow white how many times in our lifetime i know oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. right <laughs> and does that go away when the film is a little bit too accessible you know and it, right. it's just oh man i mean it's this is a fascinating kind of world here, and there's a lot playing out. And and now you have this corporate Game of Thrones playing out. It is incredibly fascinating. Yeah, it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. I mean, it's like, I think this Shang-Chi thing can go either way. Mm -hmm. um, it could either prove Chapex point. Hey, mm -hmm. you know what? The, the premiere access was the right call, Black Widow. Or it could make him look incredibly foolish. Um, we'll have to wait and see. You know, I mean, if Shang Chi comes out and just and destroys the box office, uh, Chapek, you know, will look pretty bad. 
So, and I know all we're legal ramifications too to come, I think, with that. Oh, well, oh, absolutely. A, a huge legal ramifications. Again, if they get granted discovery and you have some emails back and forth about this, that's going to look really bad. But I kind of want to leave it on a high note. So, I'm going to play sure. this one last clip sure, pretty sure. quick. And, and it's the studio releases going forward. What okay, we cool. have to look forward to. Sure. We have an incredible lineup of new programming for Disney Plus. On Thanksgiving Day, we are thrilled to be premiering the first of Peter Jackson's highly anticipated six-episode Beatles documentary, <laughs> Get Back. We also have exciting new series from Marvel, Star Wars, and National Geographic coming <laughs> later this year, including Marvel's Hawkeye, starring Jeremy Renner and Haley Steinfeld, The Mandalorian spinoff, The Book of Boba Fett, and National Geographic's Welcome to Earth with Will Smith. <laughs> I love we have that. an incredible slate of upcoming <laughs> theatrical films, starting with Free Guy, which premieres tomorrow, followed by Marvel's newest action adventure, Shang-Chi mm. and the Legend of the Ten Rings, on September 3rd. When to watch. The highly anticipated live-action musical, West Side Story, from Steven Spielberg, is set for December, as is The King's Man, a prequel in the popular Kingsman series. We have Disney Animation Studios in Canto, an incredibly heartwarming story set in a magical town in Colombia and featuring music by the incomparable Lynn manuel Miranda. Our Marvel slate includes four feature films in fiscal 2022. The all-new Eternals alongside sequels to Doctor Strange, Thor, and Black Panther. <coughs> a brand new Indiana Jones Adventure starring Harrison Ford is due in the summer, as is the origin story of another intrepid explorer in Lightyear, a spinoff of the beloved Toy Story franchise. Cool. It's a widely appealing slate with something for everybody. There it is. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a cool slate. We'll see what happens. Um, interesting times ahead of us, fellas. I, like I said many, 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 many times before, I think these are growing pains and there's going to be a lot of, a lot of hurt, a lot of short term pain. But I think at the end of the day, I think the studios, the theaters, everyone's going to kind of come to a collective consensus and it's going to, it's going to, we're going to get to a, like a, like a general sense of like a standard, I think eventually, but yeah. let's close it out with any final comments. Uh, Vash, I'll start with you. Um, final comments and everything we discussed and then um, go ahead and let everyone know where they can find you on social media, sir. Uh, I'm just, uh, you know, in the future, uh, things to watch. Definitely look at that ScarJo thing. Look for statements by Emma Stone, Emily Blunt. Maybe they worked it out. I don't know. We'll see. Um, look at, you know, what OG was saying. Bob Iger. Maybe Bob Iger comes out and does something. If he leaves and Chapek's still there, the chances of him being, you know, replaced or anything goes down tremendously. So look on for that. And I'm excited for... There you go. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So that's yeah. what I'm excited for. Indeed, baby. Uh, <laughs> uh, Indeed. You can find me at, at Vash Guy on Twitter. Uh, great interactions. You guys have, you know, you guys, they, they, they keep the conversation flowing. A lot of great ideas. So I always like that. And I'm doing a show on your, uh, uh, on your channel, OG. Freshly squeezed. Your source for juicy news and info squeeze fresh right from the Grove. And hopefully we'll have some episodes soon. So yes. keep subscribed. Absolutely. Rudio, any final thoughts, anything we discussed and let everyone know at home where they can find you, sir. Uh, I'll just say one thing about the Disney genie. I would not be surprised if we uh, don't hear anything about it at destination D 23. I think mm -hmm. that's going to be the big, we're pushing this thing just because they're already in the market. They're at Disney world. Let's show it to the, to the main consumer. That's going to be using it at first. So I think that's when we're going to probably hear some big news about what's going forward with that. But uh, other than that, excited for all things Disney. Can't wait. Uh, I'm on Disney Plus every Wednesday and Friday, just like everybody else, waiting for What If, waiting for the new yeah. content. Can't wait. Um, and you guys can find me at Rudio right there, over there. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> right there. I have to figure out where the pen goes. Uh, right. On social media, on Instagram, on TikTok, on Twitter, at Rudio. Perfect. Thank you both. Love you guys, and thank you all for watching. Comment below with everything with, that we discussed today. A lot of interesting stuff in regards to Disney Genie, Shang-Chi, Marvel, ScarJo, 
all of it. Thank you so much for watching. Like, subscribe, comment below, and have a marvelous, marvelous day.